With the news from San Diego Comic Con that Disney Plus is going to have all three seasons of The Orville streaming from August 10 this year, I thought it might be a good time to come out of semi-retirement on this channel to say a version of something I've been saying for years. Specifically, it's a response to people asking me, is The Orville worth watching? Or, for those who only watched the first episode or two of season one, why are you still watching it? These are questions I've had a lot over the years, believe it or not. Because here's the deal, before the Orville launched back in 2017, yes, it's five years ago now, all the pre-publicity material suggested this was some sort of space sitcom, a comedy version of Star Trek The Next Generation, if you will, and this was a big concern for some people. But not me, I've got to say. To be honest, aside from the involvement of McFarlane in general, it was actually the idea of comedy that got me into wanting to watch it in the first place. Episodic sci-fi comedy is rare. Think of something like Red Dwarf. There's not a lot of that out there. And I was on board for that. And you know, watching the first episode, Old Wounds, again, it's hard to argue with the fear that some people had around the comedy element. Even in the second episode, Command Performance, which has Lieutenant Commander Bordas laying an egg and then having to incubate it, it does feel more for laughs, even if it is a viable sci-fi concept in itself. But if you get to the third episode, About a Girl... That egg has hatched, and Dr. Finn is refusing Bordas and his partner Clyden's request for her to perform sex reassignment surgery on their daughter, which is a standard Mocklin practice on the rare occasion that a female is born. Now, this is a game changer. The topic's heavy, and while the series may still have gags, they kind of fall away into the background all of a sudden. The topic of sex reassignment isn't funny, and isn't treated as such. It's almost like Seth MacFarlane sold the series to Fox on the back of the first script or two. See, it's me being funny. You, you like me being funny? Uh, sign us up. And then started bringing in bigger, more serious plots and turning the comedy right down later in the series. The danger of doing this, however, is losing all the people who tuned out after an episode or two, or indeed never showed up in the first place because they weren't down for some comedy in their sci-fi, or maybe even felt that it was making fun of something like Star Trek, and some people just can't stand something that they love being made fun of. So it might interest you to know, if you haven't been watching, that the comedy is turned down even further in the second season of the show, and to a huge degree in the third season, to the extent I've seen actual complaints from people wondering where the comedy has gone. And I guess if you were watching The Orville for low-hanging fruit gags and some fast talking from McFarlane, you might be disappointed with where it's gone over the years. For most people, however, where The Orville has landed in its third series is a delicious blend of old-school Star Trek, Adventure of the Week type programming, still with the odd gag, or as happens more often, characters simply having more genuine, relatable, real reactions to the things happening around them. They're not even trying to be funny, but it makes us in the audience smile to see someone in a sci-fi show actually act like we might if we were there, rather than what a Star Trek-style script typically decrees its characters should be behaving like. It's no accident that many people have said over the years that The Orville is the best Star Trek series in town. Only recently, very, very recently, with the launch of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, do I think that franchise has again an Adventure of the Week series that makes people feel good and has seen a large section of the fandom in love with Star Trek again without the divisiveness of Discovery or Picard. So, I've done a lot of talking here, but is The Orville worth watching? I think if you like Adventure of the Week sci-fi in the style of Star Trek The Next Generation particularly, but even the original series of Star Trek to some degree, and you don't mind the odd gag or some swearing in scenarios where, again, if you or I were there, we'd be doing exactly the same thing and not acting holier than thou. If you like all that, then yes, I think the series is massively worth watching get to that third episode of the first season before you even think about giving up. By the end of the first season, you should have a good appreciation that the series really isn't Family Guy in space. And if you like that, then I promise you, seasons two and three 
only get better from there.